Another easy public policy question our government gets wrong, or maybe most profound, global warming. Right, we've all come to recognize the extraordinary danger global warming presents, but there has long been a consensus about this danger, the consensus that we're doing it, as Al Gore describes it, the debate is over. There are five points in this consensus. Number one, global warming is real. Number two, we human beings are mainly responsible. Number three, the consequences are very bad. Number four, we need to fix it quickly. And number five, it's not too late. Now, they did a study to evaluate how well that consensus was actually adopted by people who know something about the matter. So they took a random sample of 1,000 articles in peer-reviewed journals between 1993 and 2003. And they discovered that 0%, exactly 0, questioned the basic assumptions. Then they did a comparable study of articles in popular media journals between 1988 and 2002, 600 articles. They found that 53% questioned the basic consensus. Now that result is a product of the junk science that's been funded by the oil industry to make people think that two and two might be five under some circumstances, who knows, we can't really tell, leading to the extraordinary delay that our government has allowed, maybe 10 years before we address perhaps the most important public policy question our generations will face. Again, an easy question. The government just gets wrong. But the thing Madison and Reagan missed is the problem we face is not a problem of the masses rising up and stealing money from the rich. That's not been a problem for as long as we can remember. The problem we face is exactly the opposite way around. You know, it's an extraordinarily depressing debate because there is a you know, non-political answer to this problem, which is, from an economist's perspective, completely obvious. You know, which is, if you discover all of a sudden that you're producing what the economists would call an externality, an effect on other people, which is harmful, then you should either stop or pay to clean it up. And that model, which is a model supported by right-wing economists and left-wing economists, yields the conclusion that we ought to simply be taxing the production of carbon, period. It's a simple rule. It's like we're going to tax it. The price that we tax it at, the government can figure out by asking how much does it cost to remove the carbon from the atmosphere. So if it's costing $12 a ton to remove carbon from the atmosphere, that's the tax. And that level would be applied at anybody, you know, anybody producing carbon at some level, right? If we did that, what people would begin to do is they begin to think, okay, um, either I can stop producing carbon, you know, drive less, take fewer airplanes, buy solar for my house, or I'll pay the tax, and the tax will be used to remove the carbon I put in the atmosphere. Right? It's just a simple trade-off. Right? Um, and uh, just like you produce garbage at your house that I, I doubt anybody here actually takes their garbage and you know, go, goes and digs holes and puts it in the holes, you probably pay somebody to do that for you. Same thing with carbon. That's exactly it. Now, the problem is, in the political system we've got right now, that solution produces no money for any powerful industry. Right? There's nobody who gets anything from that. So what they do is they create a more complicated system on top, which is this cap and trade system for carbon credits. So they create this huge market. You, know, you have a right to produce this much pollution. You can buy and sell that right. And buying and sell that right will um, you know, enable you to have the incentive to reduce carbon. But if you can't, blah, blah, blah. So from an economic perspective, there's nothing wrong with that in theory. And from a corruption perspective, you can understand exactly why it happens, because now all these people are making huge amounts of money in these markets for trading uh, carbon. But from a practical perspective, it creates all sorts of incentives to game the system. So for example, um, there's a great paper recently about how in the uh, refrigerator business, they looked at the, the, the amount of money they could make by <clears throat> capturing carbon from the atmosphere. And they realized that all they had to do was to 
produce the carbon that they were capturing. So they had this, literally, factory where they were taking the refrigeration stuff that they were doing and producing carbon that they were capturing and then being paid for that transaction because that's what the market was creating an incentive for them to do. Um, this is you know, the kind of complex game playing that these complex systems produce as opposed to the simple system. Uh, so I would just wish that we could get some politicians who would argue for the simple, obvious, direct solution, which is to tax carbon at the level necessary to pay for its removal, and immediately we would get enormous response in how people behave and, and how much carbon is being produced. Um, uh, but for some reason, getting to the simple, obvious solutions is just not feasible in our current political environment. Um, you know, even Al Gore, who's a hero in my view, um, it took him a long time before he would even admit that the answer was a carbon tax. Uh, I mean, a real carbon tax. It was always a carbon tax which was offset by tax cuts in other places, you know, embarrassed about taxing. Um, and like, look, are you embarrassed by how much it costs to clean up, you know, to say that people ought to clean up their garbage every day? I mean, this is just garbage. And we ought to be paying to clean, we pay up that, to clean up that garbage, we should pay to clean up the carbon garbage. Thanks.